Good morning, and welcome to another edition of United Way for Southeastern Michigan's What's the Word Wednesdays. My name is Courtney Howe, and today we will be talking about the important services the Disability Network Wayne County Detroit provides to our region. As a reminder, the last 10 minutes of today's conversation are reserved for questions. So please leave your questions in the Q&A box if you're watching on Zoom or in the comment box on Facebook. Many may not know that October is National Disability Employment Awareness Month. The purpose of this month is to educate about disability employment issues and celebrate the many and varied contributions of America's workers with disabilities. Of Michigan's nearly 10 million residents, about 1.9 million have a disability. That's one in every five residents. Unfortunately, too often these individuals face employment barriers and a culture that does not appreciate the skills they can bring to a job and community. We are honored to have with us today, Ms. Lori Ann Hill Sanders, Executive Director of Disability Network, Wayne County, Detroit, an organization that seeks to change this culture by supporting individuals with disabilities and overcoming the very real barriers and learning work-related skills and helping employers navigate a complicated vocational system. Ms. Sanders is an advocate for early learning. She began her career as the director of a daycare program where she developed, implemented, and directed the Head Start program and after school enrichment programs. Ms. Sanders is the former executive director of the Taylor Reading Corps, a volunteer based organization that is committed to enhancing the learning opportunity of children in the Taylor School District. Ms. Sanders was also the executive director of Urban Services and Development Organization, a community-based organization that offers life skills training, employment and training, guidance and counseling, and other supportive services to address barriers for youth, individuals, and families. An active member in the community, Ms. Sanders has also developed programs which help Michigan parolees successfully reintegrate into Detroit neighborhoods and the labor market. As a native Detroiter, graduate of Wayne State University with a Bachelor of Science and a Master of Arts degree in guidance and counseling, Ms. Sanders is also a certified business service professional for Michigan State University's School of Labor and Industrial Relations. Welcome, Lori, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Courtney. Good morning. Um, I'm happy to be here this morning um, to share some of the services that we provide at the Disability Network of Wayne County, Detroit. The Disability Network is a community service, community advocacy organization, and our mission and our goal is to provide individuals with disabilities with the information, the resources, the education that they need so that they're able to live independently on their own within their community. Um, our, our complete, our vision is, is a community where people with disabilities, they have full access and inclusion within their community. During the pandemic, it really changed the way that we had to provide services to our uh, consumers. We transitioned to a complete virtual model or service system delivery, and that's how we delivered services. And now, um, as we're kind of, um, the pandemic is somewhat settling, we're trying, we have developed a hybrid where we're continuing to provide virtual services as well as face-to-face -face services for our consumers. Um, it's a very unique situation when we start to talk about COVID-19 because what's really unique about the Disability Network is that it is an organization that is designed and developed for people with disabilities 
that is designed and operated by people with disabilities. So you have an organization that serves the disability population, but the individuals involved within the organization are just have disabilities as well. So with that being said, you know, there has to be a lot of caution um, with how we deliver services because my staff, as well as my, myself, we're compromised and we also deal with a compromised population of people. So we have to be very careful um, how we deliver um, our services. During the pandemic, it became very important for us to be involved with providing a lot of PPE supplies um, and food distribution became very important during the pandemic because it became obvious that a lot of people with disabilities were inside their homes. They didn't have, or if they were testing positive with COVID, they shouldn't have been out in the community going to the various different food banks, um, food distributions and things of that nature. So that really, because of that need in the community, it really diversified what we did as an organization. And we found ourselves out in the community more so than ever, making sure that we were doing those food distributions as well as doing food deliveries to our consumers. And from that food delivery that we started to do, we developed um, our program called the Mobile Market to You, which is a food truck that actually goes into various different communities and we provide food for individuals in the community. And that's actually uh, what you see on the PowerPoint right now is the Mobile Market to You. And what made this really unique, um, we, put out a campaign for an artist. And I kind of described to that artist what my vision was for that mobile market to you. And we um, put a campaign out and we put a campaign out to individuals with disabilities that were artists. And um, the artist that won and actually put the mural on the truck, the gentleman's name is Michael. So that was his personal work. So that made that really unique to get the community involved with our mobile market to you by having um, someone in the community with a disability to actually paint that mural that you see on the mobile market to you. The Disability Network, we currently have five core services. Those five core services are advocacy, peer counseling, information and referral, independent living skill development, and community and youth transitions. Those are the five core services that you will see that any center for independent living um, has, um, and they, they have to provide those services. Um, in terms of um, independent living skills, I would like to mention that we actually have an apartment in Southgate. And what we do with that apartment is a fully furnished one bedroom apartment. And we actually allow individuals with disabilities to come into that apartment and we teach them basic things as cooking, cleaning, vacuuming, how to sort their laundry, how to do financial planning and budgeting for themselves finding out what resources are in the community that they would need as a resource, providing them with mobility training so that they, they actually know how to navigate themselves within the community with the resources that they need. So that is a really unique program. That work program works a lot for our youth that are in transition because our youth transition services are services that when a young person or a young youth is in high school, we're trying to provide them with all the tools that they need so that they're able to successfully transition into adulthood and live independently within their community. With our youth program um, during the summer months, and we're also in the schools year round pro providing youth transition services, but what we've also started um, about three years doing, and we continue to expand it each summer, is a summer youth career exploration program. And this is an introductory program to lead into pathways of careers. Um, we feel that it's very important mentioning um, employment that our youth are trained, that they are trained in a skilled profession, 
um, in an industry or skill set so that they're able to go on and live successfully. Because when you talk about people with disabilities and breaking those barriers, employment is one of the top barriers that we have to break. And creating economic sustainability is so important because that's what's going to allow you to have access and inclusion within your community. Um, the career pathway we currently have um, a CNA program, there is an urban gardening program with that, as well as a culinary and an auto, auto, automotive program. So those are the three programs that we, four programs that we currently have for youth in, trend, um, in transition. Next slide. Peer support groups. Peer support groups are so important. It's so important for people with disabilities regarding whatever that disability is, is having that exchange with another individual that has that same disability. Um, you're able as a person to go so much further with what it is that you're doing and you have so much more success when you're working with people that you can identify with and you're kind of going through that journey together. So peer supports are very important within our organization. Um, we currently have a peer support group for TBI, epilepsy, visually impaired and blind. And we also um, have a peer support group for seniors dealing with COVID. And once again, that was one of the programs that we had to develop out of what was going on um, during the pandemic. Next slide, please. Housing assistance, that is one of those key programs for us. As you know, people with disabilities being able to find affordable um, housing is always a challenge. So it's so important um, to be able to, to, to engage and provide them with resources so that they're able to get rental assistance, ramps and roofs, um, property tax relief, new home ownership, and section um, eight vouchers. Um, it is so important um, to build for me as the executive director of the Disability Network to build those relationships um, with other entities that have housing. Um, and it's even important, you know, if I'm even able to, to talk with developers that are coming into the community to design developments, to let them know something as simple as a universal design actually allows accessibility for people with disabilities to be able to live within that apartment. Um, so, you know, a lot of times, um, so many apartments are designed for, are accessible for people with disabilities, but just really kind of creating, giving that education and that knowledge to our developers, letting them know it's something as simple as that. And that makes it across the board where a person with a disability, as well as someone without a disability is able to live in that apartment or that home. Next slide, please. Training. Training is very important. Uh, we have financial literacy training, benefit planning. It's very important for people with disabilities that are receiving um, SSI to know that they can still work and to know how many hours they can work or how much they can still, they can work and still receive their full, full benefits. So benefit planning is truly, truly important because once again, trying to ensure that our consumers have that economic sustainability in the community. We provide housing 101, 102, and that's really equipping individuals and giving them the education, tenant and landlord issues, because whenever you are educating people, you're making sure that they're able to be an advocate for themselves once they're educated. So we continue to provide coping with COVID um, training and um, workshops and seminars. We have job club and job readiness for adults as well as our youth. And um, 
our mobility services and more importantly, mobility training, because it's so important for individuals being able to know if it's school, if it's work, wherever it is that they need to go, that they're able to be able to navigate themselves in the community and they're able to get where it is that they need to go. Next slide. Well, what we have here, um, we've got some additional websites. Um, we've got the, our main Wayne's website is www.dnwayne.org. Um, our website for our fresh food delivery is www.mobilemarket2u.com. And then for housing health training, we have www.dnwcd.org. Currently, we have three locations. We have our 5555 Connor location that's in the Samaritan Center on Connor. That's our east side location. We have a Livonia location that's located at 27459 Five Mile Road in Livonia. And then we will be moving into our third location, which is at 7800 West Ada Drive in the College Park. Um, setting. So those are our three locations. Um, our telephone number where you're able to reach us is 313-923-1655. Lori, thank you so much for sharing all those details about the amazing work that's happening uh, with the Disability Network, Wayne Detroit. Uh, we will begin the question and answer session right now. We have quite a few that's already coming into the chat, so we're excited for that. So just a reminder for those who are watching, if you've not done so, please leave your questions in the Q&A box or in the comment section on Facebook. Our first question is, how can I get connected to your information and referral service, and what types of services are there in your system? Um, the first way with getting connected with us for information and referral is reaching us at our telephone number. That is 313-923-1655. When you call that number, you will speak with someone that will get your information. They will find out what your needs are. And at that point, within 24 hours, a case manager or an independent living specialist will be contacting you to work with you to find out what your needs are and address those needs with you. Perfect, thank you so much for, for answering that. Mm -hmm. Our second question says, for rental assistance, do you provide direct cash assistance to help individuals pay rent? And are there any restrictions on this program? There are restrictions on this program, and one of the, um, not a restrictions, but requirement is that the housing 101 and 102, because we want to educate people, because we don't want it to be a revolving um, situation for our consumers, and, you know, it's so important for us to educate our consumers, give them that assistance that they need but we want them to be independent. So we wanna give them the tools and the skills that they need. So once they're educated, they can advocate for themselves and they're not falling into that situation where they're constantly behind in their rent or they're having those landlord and tenant issues. Wonderful, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Another question just came into the chat. Are there any geographic restrictions on the fresh food delivery or can I be anywhere within Wayne County? Anywhere in Wayne County. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much for that. One of your agency's missions is helping to train and prepare individuals with disabilities for employment opportunities. Can you talk about the impact of this work and why it's important? This work is so important because employment is a barrier for people with disabilities, um, making sure that people with disabilities have economic sustainability is very important. So that is a portal to making sure or ensuring that economic stability is by providing job readiness, job training. Um, that is very important and, and not so much the training, that's very important in, in introducing those career pathways, but what's also important is getting out 
in educating the workforce that people with disabilities are very reliable people. There are people that they have a skill set that they are actually talent that you can bring to your organization. It's so important to talk and educate companies and business owners that re re providing people with disabilities with reasonable accommodations, it doesn't have to mean that it's going to put you out of business because you have to provide a reasonable accommodation for someone with an a disability. It could be something as simple as a person with um, some kind of dyslexia or some kind of um, processing difficulty, just letting them at their register, if this is your cashier, letting them keep a note card at their cashier saying what their steps are. For them to work effectively for you, it just may be a matter of them having those five or six steps written down that they can look at. And that is not, that's not an investment. That is not putting a hardship on the employer. That is just something that's very minimal, but that is actually something that is allowing that person to effectively be able to do their job. Um, so that's what my role is in the community, is, is talking to those companies, talking to those business owners, and letting them know that this is a very trained, skilled workforce. I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, we're talking about um, different organizations or companies and um, different hiring practices, right? What would you like employers to know about the work that you do? And what kind of resources do you provide to different organizations who are looking to implement different policies to make sure they're being diverse and accommodating? Okay. Um, it's a lot of outreach. It's a lot of outreach that we need to do. Um, and from that outreach, you're hoping that you're getting those contacts where they're actually going to call you and call the disability network and speak to, you know, our business development professional and build a relationship with that person so that that person is able to meet their workforce need and then our consumers being able to meet their economic sustainability need as well. So it's all about education, Courtney, um, the education that I provide, and it's, it's never ending. Um, there, are, there are ADA coordinators um, within Centers for Independent Living, and those are individuals that specifically work with the businesses to let them know what they can do to make their operation and they're having those reasonable accommodations to meet the needs of an individual with a disability. So it's education and outreach. That's extremely helpful. Um, and I know that uh, we can include some more of those resources um, into the chat so people um, who are looking to be more educated and get more resources around that um, work on those policies, we can reach. And speaking of different policies, what kinds of advocacy campaigns does your organization participate in? And what should our lawmakers be focused on to better assist those in the disability community? Well, you know, just last night, um, we partnered with another organization, um, Michigan, Michigan Nonprofit Association, to provide a town hall for gerrymandering, the whole redistrict, redistricting and remapping. Um, people with disabilities, um, they need to know how this impacts them, how this could impact them, how it will impact them. So just providing that education, um, providing the education, providing the transportation, if they want to be at the TCF, you know, being a part of those hearings, you know, that's what we have. And that's a part of the advocacy, educating and providing them with the tools or the resources that they can, that they need so they can, their voice can be heard and in, in making that voice available. Absolutely. How can those who are able-bodied support your mission and be allies to this community and allies within your workplace? 
Volunteers are very important. Um, you know, that sometimes in many cases helps us with so much of the work that it is that we do. Um, volunteerism is very important. Um, so we're always looking for volunteers that have a passion about if it's being a part of the mobile market, if it's a part of being a part of any of the initiatives, if it's a part of helping um, with the food distribution, passing out PPE supplies, just coming to events with us to get information and tell individuals what it is that we're doing. That's the kind of help um, that we need. Those are the kinds of things that assist us in carrying out our work and letting the community know what it is that we do. That's extremely helpful. I'm glad that you mentioned that. So again, there are many, for those who are watching, many volunteer opportunities and opportunities for you to learn more to share within your community and work, uh, work environments as well. We have time for one more question. Uh, what kinds of mental health supports does your organization, organization uh, provide? Pardon me. You know, we have a relationship with Wayne County Mental Health Authority, and um, that's in, in collaboration with them, that's who we will do our referrals for that kind of assistance. In-house directly, we are not dealing specifically with mental health. So we do refer those services out. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing all of this. And uh, mm -hmm. at this point, Lori, that's all the time we have for questions today. So again, Lori, we thank you so much, so much for being here today and sharing all this information. And for everyone who is tuning in, you can see all of the resources and uh, web links um, in the chat box or within the comment section. So if you have any questions we um, need to reach out, please do. And uh, we have a few more updates to share before we close things out today. As a reminder, for anyone in our community who may be experiencing a need, our 211 helpline remains available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We maintain a running list of available services in the community and can connect you to support that you may need. You can also look up resources in your area by using our 211 resource directory, which is located at unitedwaysem.org slash 211. Next week at our What's the Word Wednesdays Town Hall, we will be joined by Jennifer Llewellyn, Executive Director of Oakland County, Michigan Works, to share information about programs and resources for workers and employers. To see our previous town halls and to sign up for email updates on upcoming town halls, please visit unitedwaysem.org backslash virtual town halls. The website is also included in the chat box. Again, thank you everyone. We will see you soon. Stay safe and continue to live united.